Okay, like I said, today we're starting with the rough draft outline. So here is everything you, you will need in your rough draft. Reminder, after I do this, I'm going to do what? Introduction. introduction. So don't panic when I say what's going to need to be in the introduction. I haven't talked about it yet, okay? I'm also going to remind us of this. So our rough drafts that are due on Thursday will have an introduction. In the introduction, you need an intention getter and a thesis. Do you remember what a thesis statement is? Raise your hand if you do. Cool. You'll need body paragraphs, three of them. Each body paragraph needs to have the details in it. I will remind you what the details are in a second. But do you remember on the essay outline where it has the topic sentence and then the three reasons right there? You guys filled them in with bullet points? Those are your details that will go in each body paragraph. So you should already have those on Google Classroom done. I'm pretty sure 100% of you turned that in. Okay? So you have three body paragraphs. Your reason number one is your first body paragraph. Reason number two is your second body paragraph. Reason number three is your third body paragraph. Capiche? Okay. Then you have your counter arguments. We did that last week. You have a signal phrase, a quote, and a, and a rebuttal. Okay? Got that? And then we will talk about a conclusion again later this week, but you will also have a conclusion in there. Remember, this is your rough draft, so this will be edited when we come back from break. All right, that leads us right into talking about the introduction. So this is the first time we've talked yet about writing an introduction for your persuasive essay. So I gave you an example that is literally right from here. So in your introduction, you need to have an attention getter. Does anybody remember the attention getters we use like in our mystery writing and all that? Yeah, so you're trying to hook the reader in, right? When you have an attention getter, it makes it more interesting. So what I'm trying to do here in a persuasive essay is a little bit different than our mystery writing. So I just gave us three examples of a persuasive essay hook. Put your head up, Marco, thank you. One is a question. One is a short story. Or you can have kind of a fun fact or a piece of information that is relevant to your argument. So if we look here, I want you to read this example in your head. I want you to tell me, well, if I read it again, tell me what attention getter that the person used for this example right here. Tell us how I wrote it right here. So either there or here if it's easier for you to read. So take a second, read this, tell me what example that, tell me what attention getter they used. We're talking about introductions. Our introductions are pretty simple and persuasive essay. Okay, Ashley, what attention getter? Fun fact or information. Okay, we have a fun fact or information where? The second sentence. Did you know that our bodies are made of 75% water? That's a fun fact. That's a piece of information. Okay. What else do we have? Zoe? A question. What's the question? Have you ever uh, gone to get a drink and then missed class? Okay. Have you gone to get a drink from the fountain and missed class or for labor class? I don't know why you missed an entire class, but hopefully just because you weren't getting a drink, you don't miss an entire class. But anyways. So there's actually two different attention getters in this person's introduction. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah, good. They did that. They did that because they had a question and then they provided information, okay, to back up what they're going to, what they're about to talk about. Now their statement comes after this. So you have your fun fact, your attention getter, and then what's it say comes next? Yeah. Ashlyn? Thesis. Your thesis comes next. Does anybody remember how to start a thesis? Do you remember how to start a thesis, Brayden? Nope. Start a, a thesis. How do you start a thesis, Zoe? With I believe. With I believe for us. Our I believe stuff, right? So here, they said what? I think that we should have easy at H2O with the LCS because, and I left three blanks. What are the three blanks? Marcos? It's their three reasons. It's their three reasons, right? So obviously I didn't put the reasons in. But we can tell what one of the reasons here in a second. So your thesis is an I think or an I believe statement, and then it tells what you want, and then it gives your three reasons. What's somebody's uh, thesis that they have, that they've already come up with? Wesley, what's your thesis? I believe that recess, that longer recess, can help expel excess energy, okay. have more time for future planning, and um, have uh, more time for social development. Oh, good, okay, so three reasons right there. It's a perfect thesis statement. So he's already got part of his introduction done. What does he need to add to his introduction when he writes his rough draft? 
Amelia? A hook. A hook. A hook. And you can use a couple of these if you need to. Okay? You want to use a short story and then a question, or a question and then a short story, or a question and then a fun fact? Be my guest. That's how you write an introduction. I will leave this up here today as we go in and we write our own rough drafts. Capiche? Okay. So I also wrote it up here in case this goes out on me because it was going out on me kind of being weird. Okay. So make sure you have your three reasons included in your thesis. Riley Wilson's going to follow me over to the short board because we're going to talk about body paragraph structure. Get ready, Freddies. Can you see me? Yes. Cool. So our body paragraphs are the next how many paragraphs in our essay? So we have our first paragraph as an introduction. How many body paragraphs do we need, Nick? Three. 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 They all are going to follow this structure here. Do you remember me doing this last week at all? Some of you are like, eh. Some of you are like, yeah. Okay. So each one starts with a what? Frickin'? Topic sentence. Our topic sentence. So our topic sentences start with specific words. That I put at the bottom. We call them signal words. We've been using signal phrases for our attention getters. We're going to use signal words for our body paragraphs. So our signal words are words like first, my next reason, second, another reason, I also believe that, blah, blah, blah. What are some other attention <coughs> signal words? Anybody have any other signal words I left out, Marco? Um, what do you consider like I argue? I argue, okay, my other argument for, another reason for this or that. So it's something to let the reader know that you're about to make another point, okay? So in Wesley's argument, he's about to make another point about, what was your longer first one? Recess. Longer recess, okay? So his topic sentence would be something along the lines of, first, his first body paragraph, first I would like to argue that we should have longer recess because and he tells why. Then his details are things that include, or things that are about his topic sentence, right? They have to be relevant. Where do these quotes come in that we've been working on? Remember working on the last week, working on quotes and quote sandwiches? When would be a good time to add a quote into our body paragraph? Zoe? What's that? Maybe detail three, or just de detail two or three, somewhere in there. Details don't all have to be their own independent thing. So for example, what's your first reason again, Wesley? Um, my first reason is to expel excess energy. To expel excess energy, okay? So he believe, I believe that we should have a longer recess so that we can expel excess energy. His first detail could be Micah Jameson, a fifth grader at LCS says that he loves recess because when he gets done, he feels like he's ready to focus in class. And his second detail could be, <coughs> This backs up my point that we should have longer recesses. Detail three could be students at LCS have shown better performance scores when we've had a second recess in the I day, something like that. Good, man, good. You could flip, flip that as a detail. Also, all the different statistics you've researched, if you have any statistics, those are the details, okay? What is a closing sentence? What does the closing sentence do, Brecken? Basically, it's sum it all up. It sums it all up. It makes sure you give all these reasons and then you sum it all up. You remember doing that on your outline? You had to sum it all up, you had to do a complete sentence? Perfect. So your signal phrases, just make sure they are in the topic sentence. Capiche? Capiche. Very good. So, that's basically it. You can swing that back around. Make sure as you're writing your introduction, you just go ahead and look at the example that we have up here. Your introduction for your persuasive essay is pretty simple, right? Yeah, it's like three to four sentences tops. Okay, it can even be around two. It could be an attention getter and then a thesis and then you can move on. And once we get our body paragraphs worked out, then we can add more to our introduction. All right, have I gone over the conclusion yet? No. So if you get to that point today, and you're cruising, you're typing so quick, and you get there, give it, a be give it your best shot based on what I'm going to have up here. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and show you a conclusion, and I'm just going to leave it there. Okay? Tomorrow we will talk more about a conclusion and how to write one for a persuasive essay. Got that? Yeah. Good? Okay. Any questions, concerns, comments? Marco? So what if we don't get done with this? What if we don't get done with this on, um, what happens if we 
again? You'll just do it while we watch that movie. Watch a movie. Okay, just like we did before Thanksgiving. For those of you who weren't done with your whatever sheet it was, I don't remember at this point. Research paper. Research paper notes. You had to do research paper notes during that. So you'll just get it done at that point. Okay, this will be done and turned in on Google Classroom. If you are somebody who does not have an iPad right now, or it's broken or whatever, you are going to handwrite it, and then you're going to turn it into me, and I will grade the hard copy. Got it? But if you want to handwrite it, you're handwriting it, and you get home and you forgot your iPad or something, and you want to get it done, you handwrite it, you need to take a picture of it and still turn it in on Google Classroom. Make sense? Okay, because that's where I'm going to leave the comments. When we come back from break, all of my comments are going to be on Google Classroom about what you need to fix or what you did really well on, on, on there. And you'll check that and you'll edit that based on what I say. Okay? Got that? Okay. So today you're going to begin typing and working. You can move around the room. You are working independently. My suggestion is for you to use your essay outline paper. That will make you get this done so much faster instead of just trying to remember. Your essay outline papers, for most of you, are on Google Classroom still. So you can use those. You can go back and look at them. Okay? We good there? Good. All right. So you may begin. You can start moving around the room. If you have any questions, you can let me know.